Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening from wherever you are around the world. Welcome to this presentation. Um, I'm uh, Gerard van der Linde. I work at uh, Wagenjuar Plant Breeding um, uh, and do a lot of potato research together with different companies. Um, so Wagenjuar Plant Breeding, I just have to admit a few people, so I don't know what happens here, but it's okay. There we go. Wagenjuar Plant Breeding is part of Wagenjuar University in Research, which is a combined university and non-profit research institute organization. Um, Wagner UR Plant Breeding indeed is such a combined group where former government institutes that are now non-profit institutes work together with the university chair of plant breeding. We're a big group, over 200 people at any time. Uh, that includes 60 PhD students, staff, and master students that uh, do their uh, theses within our group. We're also a highly international group. Um, we have over uh, 30 nationalities at any time uh, uh, during the year. And our research covers all aspects of plant breeding. And here on the right, you see a picture of the campus that is still uh, uh, getting larger and larger. And uh, the building behind this one, here with the green, is where plant breeding is. Wagner Plant Breeding has a mission that says that we conduct research that facilitates the development of high yielding, high quality crops with stable and sustainable yields under varying conditions. Um, I'm just gonna hide this. Um, we do this uh, by understanding, trying to understand the mechanisms and unravel the genetics of yield, stability, adaptation to conditions, disease resistances, quality and sustainability of the, of, the, of, the, of the yield itself, of the harvest itself. And we do this on a large number of crops, but potato is definitely one of our most important crops. It's an important crop for the Netherlands, and we do uh, uh, pretty much every aspect of breeding research that you can think of within uh, uh, plant breeding on potato. Back to this statement, we facilitate research. That means that potato, uh, you are plant breeding does not make varieties, develop varieties itself. It provides tools and knowledge that the breeding community can profit from and use to make new and better varieties. In addition to this research to provide knowledge and tools, we also provide education, spe specifically targeted to breeding. We communicate a lot with our stakeholders, and our stakeholders are breeding companies, farmers, consumers, society, and government. And we try to answer the questions that come from our stakeholders to solve the problems that the stakeholders have and that they formulate, and also to anticipate future needs and challenges that our stakeholders may not have thought of, but that we think are uh, possibly essential uh, uh, for the future to, uh, to study. So I mentioned we do education. We have a master thesis program uh, aimed at plant breeding and many of the graduates that do their thesis, their MSc in Wageningen are employed by the breeding companies, which gives us a very nice uh, uh, link to the companies as well. The MSc curriculum is updated every now and then, and we try to tailor it to new challenges and opportunities. And for that, we listen to also to what the breeding industry has to say and we try to implement their ideas on what they think that the breeders need to know that is not yet part of the curriculum. And we implement novel developments, research developments that benefit uh, breeding as well. We also educate and uh, uh, raise PhD students and the PhD students are very often parts of projects that involve companies and in these joint uh, university uh, Wagner plant breeding and company projects, the students learn about breeding companies and see whether they would like to work in a uh, corporate environment. But the breeding companies also get to know promising students, so it's a two-way street. 
The studies, the research that we do at Wagner are plant breeding address questions and problems of potato breeders and growers. And very often this is about disease resistance, but quite often also about sustainability and environmental stress and how that impacts yields, the use of fertilizer, the use of water, quality aspects, developmental aspects of the crop. While the society and government more or less have more, more questions that include uh, what happens when we look at climate change, temperature changes, water uh, availability, uh, how can we make potato growing and cultivation more sustainable? Sometimes these questions very much are uh, focused on specific breeder goals, but very often these questions are overlapping. When we have questions that are very much focused on a single problem or a specific problem for breeders, we can have a bilateral project with a single company, and most of the times this is confidential and the results are owned uh, by uh, the, uh, the companies. Uh, but very often when the, the, uh, the questions overlap, we work with public-private partnerships that what we call in the Netherlands the Golden Triangle, a collaboration between academia, industry and government financed by industry and government and with a very strong involvement of the academia for the research. Very often these public-private partnerships are pre-competitive, involve not one but more breeding companies, and they address issues that all the breeding companies can benefit from and the results are then taken into the companies and used within their own research and development uh, uh, programs. Examples of enabling research for the breeding community is, for instance, the potato genome sequence that was coordinated. The effort to get the potato genome sequence was coordinated by Wagner UR Plant Breeding, finished in 2011 and published in Nature, 2011 and published in Nature, and uh, has given the breeding company a enormous important, enormously important tool and resource for alleles, sequences, markers, and allelic variants. And that allelic variance we are building up on now within the potato pan genome project where we sequence a number of tetraploid potato varieties and try to uh, identify allelic variation for important traits. Another example of an important uh, project that we've done in the past is the uh, umbrella plan Phytophthora in Dutch, the Paraplutlan Phytophthora, which targets Phytophthora the disease and to improve the resistance to Phytophthora of new varieties through all kinds of different approaches. On the one hand, biotech approaches, we try to find sources, identify the genes and use the genes through integration or through biotech sources to see whether they can uh, uh, confer resistance. But this is also, also part of this project is the BioImpulse project, which is aimed at organic breeding. So sources for resistance can be used in uh, organic breeding uh, to improve uh, the varieties for phytophthora resistance, also for the bio, uh, the organic industry. Another example of uh, collaboration between Wagner University plant breeding and companies is the top sector program. Uh, again, a, a golden triangle program with the Netherlands, with the academics, the companies, and the government. And just as an example of what a project would look, uh, does look like, uh, I've taken the Water Saving Potatoes project, which was finished a couple of years ago and included four breeding com companies, HZPC, Everest Seeds, Meyer, and KWS. And together we addressed the question of what does potato need to limit yield loss under water limiting conditions? This project uh, had one PhD student, assistance from uh, lab assistance from Wagner Plant Breeding and supervision. And the PhD student that worked on the project is uh, pictured here on the right. Now this project contains two main parts. One is about field trials. Uh, there, the field trials were done by the companies, were managed by the companies, different locations in the Netherlands and outside of the Netherlands and were done in multiple years and at multiple locations to collect reliable data. These data were collected by the companies and by the PhD students. The companies did a lot of uh, data collecting when it comes to yield, while the PhD student was more looking at physiological, more detailed traits. All the data came together in the project at Wagner Plant Breeding and were analyzed, multi-data and multi-year. And the output was that we could have a ranking of more than 100 potato cultivars 
on drought tolerance under different years, different locations and different conditions. More scientifically, we could link the canopy growth and the photosynth photosynthetic capacity to potato yields. And I think an important output is also that we got experience in how to do dry tri drought trials and selections under dry uh, water limiting conditions. It's not straightforward to get uniform selections and reliable selections in a, a drought trial. And we've learned a lot by doing this together as Wagen UR and uh, the breeding companies. An example of an output is here you see uh, the tuber yield for uh, one of our experimental fields in Conantra and has a PC, uh, PC field in 2014 and 2015. And here you see the yield and the distribution of sizes of the tubers in these yields. And the black bars represent the drought, the white bars, the irrigation. And you can see that in the two different years, you see a different pattern. The second year had a lot more smaller tubers, while the uh, uh, bigger tubers were more affected. And this wasn't so clear in the 2014. An important result when you look at uh, uh, marketable yield rather than just kilograms. And um, when you look at the canopy growth that you know, provides the photosynthetic capacity and the sugars to the tubers, you can see that the canopy growth in 2014 of the drought, which is again black, was affected from the very early on and restored at the later stage to a level of about 70%. Uh, uh, but um, uh, was clearly affected in the beginning, while in 2014, uh, 15, sorry, the canopy yield, uh, canopy development was more or less the same under irrigated, nor, nor irrigated conditions in early season, but the canopy never reached its maximum, so it never could make enough sugars to provide for the tubers that were already formed and for the new tubers that were forming. And this was very much linked to the, uh, uh, the conditions. In 2014, we had an early drought and later more rain, while in 2015, we had early rains and later more drought. So these two different drought scenarios do not only impact the growth of the canopy, but also the yield and even the distribution of the yield over the different tuber size fractions. A very important result, I think, for uh, the potato breeders. This Water Saving Potatoes project also had a laboratory component where most of the projects we do have had this sort of kind of distribution in, in, in activities. In the laboratory, we look at a limited number of genotypes, but a much more detailed analysis on physiology and molecular mechanisms. In the Water Saving Potatoes project, we looked at mechanisms for carbon and sugar partitioning, and we looked at transport mechanisms from the shoots to the tubers and the role of the stem. And we looked at drought-induced changes in gene expression to see which genes might be responsible for these differences in partitioning, but also for these differences uh, in, in other traits that relate to drought tolerance. The output of this part is much more knowledge. It's about mechanisms, about physiological adaptation, about genes, and sometimes, if we're lucky, we can also convert those genes into markers that can then be directly used as a, a tool in breeding. Another important uh, initiative that uh, allows us to collaborate with companies uh, on potato research is the HIP project, the Holland Innovative Potato Project, which is again financed in this golden triangle uh, by potato by, by the government and by potato companies, and not just breeding companies, but also com companies from the industry. So it covers a lot of stakeholders for potato. This Holland Innovative, Innovative Potato Initiative uh, has a lot of different projects taking part. Uh, one of them is uh, understanding the sugar transport to the tuber, which is uh, a, a direct extension of results that we also had within water saving potatoes and addresses the question of how variation in potato for metabolite and sugar transport can be used in breeding. Another example of a project is of, of projects that look at stress tolerance and interaction with the soil. Much more difficult to do because the soil and the roots are below ground and are not so easy 
to study and to find genetic variation for root structure and root traits. Uh, typically something that at the university we will try and do. So within the project that looks at the root resilience, uh, we look at salt and low end tolerance and the involvement, the, the importance of different architectural root systems. So we develop techniques to look at the roots of the plants and try to see what adaptations in the roots relate to salt and uh, a low nitrogen availability tolerance. And here you see two varieties that were grown under dry conditions, in this case, low water conditions. And you can see that there's a different response in the root system where the variety on the right tends to invest in its root system and the variety on the left much less. Holland Innovative Potato also includes uh, uh, projects on other subjects, quite a few projects on disease resistance, both bacterial, uh, virus resistance, nematode, insect resistance. We cover a lot of aspects within the Holland Innovative Potato. And here in the Holland Innovative Potato, it is the companies that determine the agenda. The questions from the companies determine what kind of projects will be done within Holland Innovative Potato. I also mentioned that we do not just do the research that the company and the government asks us to do. We also like to think about what might be important in the future for the breeding companies. Uh, one aspect that we've addressed is mapping in polyploid species, which uh, up until uh, five to 10 years ago was very difficult or not possible. We have run and we're still running a large project that includes many, many companies with many different uh, uh, crops uh, still add into the project where we develop statistical tools, genetic tools to enable mapping with polyploid plant material. And some of these uh, statistical tools are already out for, for use. We look at gene editing, CRISPR-Cas kind of approaches techniques, uh, also in potato. We look at recombination as, you know, the basic uh, 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 process for plant breeding. Uh, can we make that less a chance thing and more something that you can control? And we look at phenotyping, high throughput selection by looking at the traits for desirable, by looking at the plants for desirable traits. Phenotyping uh, has given us, uh, we have given a lot of opportunities for phenotyping within the program ANPAC, which uh, comes from a very big grant from the university, from the government, both for Utrecht and for Wageningen University, where we, where we have been able to invest in uh, facilities for phenotyping, looking at the plants, measuring all types of traits in the plants from very detailed in contained environments to greenhouse, to even field environments. And as an example, here you see what we invested in, in field phenotyping. And on the left in the movie, you see the field explorer, which is a vehicle that can drive over your crop. This is wheat, but we can also uh, do potato. It drives over your crop and in the cabinet here are cameras that take all kinds of measurements uh, uh, from your crop that will tell you how your crop is performing and what traits are affected by the weather treatments or whether there are diseases. We add drone data, uh, we fly drones over our fields and add data to our collection of data. And that's not where we stop because for this kind of approach, it's very important to be able to manage your data. It's a huge uh, uh, data set that you will acquire. So we're also developing pipelines that allow you to visualize the traits and to translate that into something that a breeder could use for selection. Phenotyping aspects include simple ones like number of plants, emergence, height, maybe more complicated ones like diseases, senescence, plant structure with a LIDAR, but also transpiration, physiological traits, that transpiration can be measured with thermal cameras that relate to uh, the, the opening of the stomata. So many, many different aspects in high throughput that you can add to your breeding selection program. In conclusion, research at plant breeding Wagenuar happens a lot in collaboration with companies, either single or multiple, with or without government, either within the, the Netherlands, but also outside the Netherlands, for instance, within EU projects. And we provide tools and knowledge for the breeding community. We do also independent research to facilitate the advancement of potato breeding. 
And the results, products, are not just genes, are not just varieties and data on varieties, but also include education, training, and again, I want to emphasize that we gain experience as partners in the project on complicated trials, on complicated measurements that could be selection tools in the future. Thank you for joining. Now, let me see whether I can open up the chat box. I will stop my sharing. Yeah, if you have questions, please put them in the chat box and uh, I will uh, see whether we can address some of the questions in the time that we still have allocated. If I mention your name or your, uh, 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 there we go. Um, maybe uh, Zee Janssen, you can open up your microphone and ask the question in person that gives a little bit more lively discussion. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, as I was, was asking, I was uh, wondering if you could uh, give me an, an image that you would maybe draw of the importance of breeding new varieties in the whole range of solutions that there currently are or are maybe being developed for slowing down or adapting to climate change? I think there's, there's really... Uh, a lot to gain also on the varieties themselves. It's something that we haven't invested in. Uh, potato has been uh, uh, what I would call pampered uh, for a long time, and some cultivars have grown under slightly more uh, challenging conditions. But I think there's still uh, quite a lot to gain. But there are limits to what you can do within your crop without affecting yield too much. So I think it's always a combination of trying to make varieties that adapt to conditions and then see what these conditions are. How, how can you most efficiently use your water and your nitrogen, and then have the most optimal variety to adapt to this? Uh, uh, are you going to apply your water through drip irrigations? And can you uh, have the varieties that are not just adapted to less water, but also to your drip irrigation systems? So I think it's one way of doing it, and it's definitely something that uh, will have uh, gains, but it needs to be done in coordination with uh, improved management strategies. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Please, if you have a question, say so in the chat box so that we can give you the floor. No questions yet? Um, if I may, I want to, I could maybe ask another question. Yeah, please. Because uh, this morning, uh, Gerard Box was, I think it was Gerard who was also talking about like, okay, we, uh, in Europe, we are sort of responsible for keep developing also for, for different uh, uh, continents. Yep. Um, so is, is that a, a focus that you are working on at Wageningen that, um, yeah, so are you also doing this research in, in, for example, in Africa and for, for the environmental challenges there or everywhere else around the world? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, most, mostly the Netherlands are an important focus, but uh, we do uh, have collaborations with other parts of the world where we also look at uh, um, potato growth, uh, sometimes with Dutch companies involved. For instance, uh, we've done a study in, uh, for nitrogen use efficiency and fertilizer use in Ethiopia, where the farmers don't have access to enough fertilizers or they're always working with low nutrient conditions. And HACPC helped us in this project to provide material and uh, to help us uh, think about uh, possibilities within the project. Uh, we have collaborations uh, in India where, where um, uh, companies are involved. Uh, so we do look further than just Europe, uh, but it very often involves um, also uh, 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 part partners and participants from the target areas, because 
in the end, we want to do field trials in those environments under those conditions, which for Ethiopia is, is for instance, that it means that you're at 2000 meters evaluations and other temperatures and possibly also other environment influences like diseases. So you always have to uh, translate that to the real situation. But definitely our traits and our targets include, uh, for instance, temperature, uh, which in, in, in other parts of the world is a very important target. I just got the, uh, the notification that we have to stop at 12.10 and it's 12.10. So I would like to thank you for listening in. If you have any additional questions, uh, uh, you can always try and get my email at wagnerur and uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to address questions through email. Thank you.